All right. Hello. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My name is I Am Unique. There we go. And I'm here to share some wisdom that God has shared with me. God was like really dealing with my heart and mind about um, how the spirit of poverty attacks us, how the spirit of poverty and lack can come into your life and can wreak havoc in your life. Um, I know that sometimes we think like because we don't have money or we're not seeing fruitfulness in our life, we think, oh, I need more money. If I had more money, then it'll solve this problem. But it's a mentality that we have that attracts this spirit into our life. Uh, I, there's, there's this man of God and he was talking about um, a couple of men of God I came across and they were talking about one of them is Pastor Rich. Um, and then another one is Apostle God, I can't think of his name, but he's a very powerful man from Africa. But they were the 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 mentalities that we carry attract spirits. It's kind of like you are you attract what you are. And um Pastor Rich first left church in Orlando, Florida. He he talked he talks about how when you get deliverance, when you get free from these different spirits, these different demons that are inside of you, when they come out of you, um, if you don't renew your mind by the word of God, if you don't read and you know build your mindset build your mindset up, then these spirits are literally gonna come back into can or you're, I wouldn't say they will, but you're more vulnerable for these spirits to come back into your life because you're making your mind is like their habit, their habitat for them. It's kind of like you, you know, you, you make people feel welcome. You're making somebody feel welcome. Like it's your house. Like if, if, if I want roaches to come in my house, then, or ants or something, filled rats, then I, all I have to do is not take care of my house. You know, have crumbs and crap all throughout the floor. And it's going to attract that, those rodents because I'm inviting them in by how my house is kept. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, the spirit of poverty and lack how it operates. Um, I have had my battle with this, uh, still in it, you know, still learning of course, but I just want to share something that God has shared with me that is really blessing me right now. And it's just unlocking my mind right now. just breaking me free. Um, the Lord took me to John chapter six. Um, and the, from, I say from verse one to 14 or so. It's a story where Jesus fed 5,000 men with um, two loaves, no, two fish and five loaves of bread, right? Two fish and five loaves of bread. Now, these are 5,000 grown grown men. It says men, so I'm assuming they're grown, right? Um, you think, you know, men, they have very strong appetites. They like to eat, right? And so, um, of course, to the human mind, Looking at five loaves of bread and two fish, we would naturally think that this is not enough. This is not going to, this is a lot of people, a little food. You know, that's a mentality that we may have just naturally speaking, just being real. But Jesus said, the Bible says in John chapter six and verse 11, it says, Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fish as much as they would. And verse 12 says, when they were filled, he said unto the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing be lost. In verse 13, therefore they gathered them together and filled the 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Huh. So basically what's happened is um, Jesus gave thanks for this food and they served it to the five that him and his homies, him and the disciples, him and his crew served what they had, the five loaves and two fish to the, to the, to the men. And they even had food left over. So a miracle took place here. Cause once again, naturally speaking, you don't probably wouldn't be feeding 5,000 hungry men with, with, you know, this, this food. But anywho, the miracle or the revelation that God gave me is that whew, when you view what you have in your position as not enough, that is inviting the spirit of poverty and lack into your life. 
when you view what you have as not enough or when you don't value what you have, it's inviting the spirit of poverty into your life. On the contrary, when you give thanks for what you have, when you value and appreciate the things that you have, it attracts abundance into your life. It invites abundance. It invites the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. So thanksgiving, stepping aside from this right quick, but thanksgiving ushers in the presence of God. And remember what I said earlier, like when you have spirits operating in your life, the Holy Spirit is a spirit as well. So just like you can have a certain mentality that attracts a certain devil or a demon, you can have a certain mentality that attracts the Holy Spirit. Thanksgiving attracts God. God likes for us to, to give thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a sacrifice that we can offer to God, that God appreciates. Not that he's insecure, that he needs, you know, he like forcing us, like you got to be thankful or whatever, but it's a mentality. It's an attitude that we must have if we want to attract the Holy Spirit into our life. When the Lord hears Thanksgiving, it's like, oh my gosh, like, oh, well, well, we, we're hearing Thanksgiving. That means I need to send more, you know, not, I don't know if this is how he talks, but you know, it's like it attracts the presence of God into your life and vice versa. When you have a mindset that thinks like, oh, that's all I do. It's, I don't do nothing. I don't got nothing. It's all I When you're thinking like that, it, it's attracting the spirit of poverty into your life. And I've seen it, like, literally operating in my life. And the Lord, this, this, uh, the Lord wanted me to apply this to not only um, gifts and talents in your calling, but also to finances and resources. Um, speaking to gifts and talents and skill sets and callings, um, I was talking to a lady earlier today and she was talking to me about singing. She was just telling me how she saw me singing on the internet and she just was like, you know, I wish I had a, a gift that I could give to God. And I was just like, honey, you're, you're, she's married. She's been married for 16 years, by the way, now. And she said, um, you know, I wish I had a gift to offer God, like you're singing and stuff. And I was just like, honey, your marriage is a gift. Your marriage is a gift to God. Sticking together, staying with the same person for 16 years, that is a gift. That is, I said, that is harder than singing. To be real, you know what I'm saying? But she was viewing what she does as not enough or as something that's not valuable to God. And then, you know. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Whatever you are doing, whatever, you know, God has graced you to do is a blessing and it's an honor and it's a gift to God and God values whatever gift, you know, like when you're a child and, or like, even if you're a parent and, you know, you have a child or, and they draw you something, they draw you like a picture or something, and it could be like just the scraggliest looking person on the or whatever. But you like so it's just like oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, and it's just like warms your heart because it's not about like it being perfect or it being a certain way. It's like this is my oh my baby brought me this. It's, they're expressing themselves and they want to share it with me. You know what I'm saying? That's how the Lord is. So it's not a sometimes it's not about just being perfect and hitting all the right notes and hitting all the the marks and all this stuff it's not about all that all the time sometimes it's just about like giving sharing bringing to the table what you already have because if you don't value oh my gosh i hate this man but if you don't value what you already have if you don't value the qualities that god has blessed you with if you don't value your attributes your characteristics your gifts your talents your skills your resources if you don't value what you have then you will never use it say it's, it's so many people walking around here with so many gifts and things that god has blessed them to be able to do i'm one of them and so i'm not saying that i'm always using everything to the best of my ability sometimes I fall short of the glory of God, to be honest. But 
there are so many of us out here with so many great ideas, talents, skills, just stuff inside of us that God has just loaded us with, but we don't value it. We think that it's not enough just because maybe the world doesn't have necessarily a a platform for it, or maybe the world doesn't glorify it or something. And so we just hold hold back because we don't think that it's valuable because the enemy has caused us to believe that what we have isn't valuable when that's not true. That's one of the biggest threats that I see the enemy has and uses against the body of Christ. Um, not just, and it could be men or women, but I would say especially women, women struggle with their worth because women, um, this is another subject, but women we're looking for, we love affirmation. Men do too, but women, we love to be called beautiful. We love to be, you know what I'm saying? Praised and not like praised like God, but we like to be admired. We like, that's why we dress up. That's why we do our nails and get eyelashes. And I don't do that, but you know, that's why we do these types of things. Wear certain clothes, dress a certain way because we want to be viewed and received as beautiful. We want to be admired, you know? And so the enemy can play on that by causing us to feel like we're not beautiful or causing us to feel like we're not valuable or causing us to place all of our value in our looks. So if we don't look a certain way, then we're not valuable, right? As a woman, anyway, your value should not be in how you look. You should take pride in how you carry yourself and how you look. But ultimately, your mind, your soul, your spirit is what a real man, man of God, and a, a man that got a godly man that you would want to be with, that's what's going to attract this man or this person. I'm not saying you out here trying to catch people, but you know, that's what you want people to admire about you most, not your looks, because your looks are going to fade. Beauty, the Bible says in Proverbs 31, the beauty fades. Wait, no, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. So all of this flesh is going to wither and get wrinkled and stuff one day, whether we want to or not. You know, we have, I'm not saying don't keep yourself up and don't care for yourself because you want to look good as long as possible. But there comes a day when you're just not going to look like you used to look. You know, you're not going to be as, I don't know, as you used to be. And so, but anyway, our value should not be in our looks anyway. It should be in who we are in Christ, our identity in Christ. I, you know, that that's where eternal value lies right so anyway that's another subject but i want to get that in there um it's important for us to always be taking inventory of what we have um as far as our gifts and talents and as far as our resources i'm still on gifts and talents right gifts and talents like the things that god is giving you the natural ability to do um it could be excuse me it could be singing Excuse me. It could be singing. It could be um, writing. It could be preaching. It could be teaching. It could be being an usher. It could be being a mother. It could be being a great father. It could be being a great daughter, a great sister, just a good friend. It could be being a nail tech. It could be being a barber. It could be being an, a lash tech. It could be being an esthetician. It could be um, being a, um, a gym, what do you call it? A fitness coach or a trainer. It could be being an athlete. It could be driving cars for a living. It could be working at McDonald's. It could be flipping burgers. It could be making French fries. It could be being a chef. It could be being a waitress. It could, there's so many different things that God has graced each and every one of us to be able to do. It could be owning a daycare, or taking care of children well, or just being a great, you know, um, you're taking care of puppies, you know, it's so many things out here that God has graced each and every one of us to do. But I think sometimes we think that just because it's not the traditional church thing to do, just because we're not a preacher or, you know, all that type of stuff, then what we have to offer the body of Christ isn't valuable or we don't have to use our gifts for the glory of God. Well, we don't need, you know what I'm saying? We can downplay our gifts and talents if it's not a certain way, if it's not fitting within a certain construct of a society or church that we grew up in. Because when we don't value what we have, we won't, it changes the way that we do what we, what we do. Say, for instance, I'm a, uh, 
I got all these wonderful poems. I'm a poet. I'm a speaker, which is true. But if I don't ever think, if I think, oh my, if I'm constantly thinking, oh my God, my poems are not enough. This is just, this is just basic. And I wrestle with this still. But, you know, if I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is, it's just a poem. It's just a poem that God gave me. It's just, you know, it's just nothing much, nothing crazy. It's not all that. It's just, just a poem. It's just a poetry book. Like, it's literally just here. Like, you can look at it if you want. Like, see how that's an attitude? And, like, who would want to support? <laughs> who would want to support? Who would want to listen to you or support you if that's your attitude you, you have, you're carrying around with you? It's, like, repelling, um like business or it's repelling attention it's repelling support it's repelling resources it's repelling success like you don't want to carry the attitude with what you do you could be working at mcdonald's yeah i just work at mcdonald's all i do is sweep the floor all i do is clean up the lobby i'm not saying you know if that's not what you want to do long term that's cool too but don't let it affect your attitude whatever you're doing do as unto the lord you need to be find something about what you're doing to be grateful about so that their poverty mentality don't sit in. Find, well, I'm cleaning up this restaurant. I know one day I want to have my own restaurant. So right now I'm learning the ins and outs of how to, you know, how to keep the restaurant clean. I'm learning how, you know, how to sit up in the morning and how to close at night. I'm learning how to, you know, I'm learning different skills. I'm learning how to talk to people. You know, you have to find value in what you're doing so that you can have an attitude of gratitude, a mentality of gratitude. As far as qualities you have, um, I was listening to a sermon by Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts, uh, and I cannot remember the name of it, but it was some weeks ago, and she was just talking about how one of the metaphors she made, she was like, if you don't think that you're a wife, if you don't think that you can be a wife, or if you don't think that you can be a husband, if you don't think that you can own a business, if you don't think that you can do something, then of course you're not going to be able to do it because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you're always thinking this way, thinking there's no way I can be a, there's no way in the world I can be a billionaire. There's no way in the world that my family's going to get saved. There's no way in the world that I can write this book. There's no way in the world people are going to listen to what I have to say. There is no, it's, and so when you think these thoughts, there's no way I'm going to be a wife. You know, I got a crazy past. Um, I used to be ratchet. It's hard. It was hard for me to be fair. There's no way I'm going to be a husband because I used to be with all these women and, you know, all this. Your mentality is affecting how you approach the blessing that God wants to give you. And, you know, of course we have flaws. Nobody's perfect. So sometimes we should, uh, you know what I'm saying? That harping. Yes, we should be humble and know our weaknesses, but sometimes we have to take an account of our strengths and our values as well. I guess I used to be just example, okay? Yes, I used to be ratchet. Yes, I used to, you know, have all these different partners and stuff. Uh, whether you're a man, you know, speaking male or female perspective. Yes, I used to be out here in these streets and be wild, and but at least. I kept my house clean. <laughs> like, I don't know. I know it's crazy, but at least I kept my house clean. At least I was, you know, kind to the people I did, you know, date or whatever. At least I was solid. At least I handled my money right. At least, you know, at least I was caring. Find qualities, attributes, and things about yourself that are that that you can give thanks for and find value in so that you're not operating from a scarcity mentality speaking to i could really go in on it i might make a podcast about that because that's really something that can be talked about but on the other end resources the things that you have uh, one of my favorite videos that I've watched by Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, the late and great Dr. Miles Monroe, he talked about um, this lady who lost her job and she had kids and she didn't know how she was going to feed her kids. She got her last check. She was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. She was crying, losing her mind. And Dr. Miles Monroe was like, don't panic. It's like, do you have a stove in your house? She was like, yeah. And <laughs> the lady was like, um, 
Oh my gosh. Uh, yes, I do. He was like, how often do you use your stove? And she was like, probably once a week. And he was like, you have a whole stove in your house that you're not, you, you, six days a week, you're not using the stove. Long story short, he inspired this, <clears throat> inspired this woman to go bake some cookies and take the cookies to her job where she worked. And gosh, this is so good. And bake some cookies, take the cookies to the job and give them out for free. If she did that, next thing you know, these people wanted more cookies from this woman that she made. Next thing you know, she kept getting orders and orders and orders. She had to keep making cookies. Next thing you know, this woman got a whole, some years, some time down the line, this woman got a whole company. One of the biggest companies in her area. Making cookies. Because of that abundance mentality. She, when the spirit of poverty attacks you, it causes you to become fearful. It causes you to look at the limitations instead of the opportunities. It causes you to lock in and focus in on what you do not have. It causes you to, it's just, it's like, it it, it corners you. It's like a, I don't even know how to describe it, but it doesn't feel good. Because I've been there. I've been in the corner. I've literally been like with a headache, like crying, frustrated, angry, confused it has attacked me before so i'm knowing how it operates but to keep that mud off of you give thanks because <laughs> it's not a game like the devil comes to steal kill and destroy like in any way shape or form he wants to steal your hope he wants to steal your joy he wants to steal your peace he wants to steal your your confidence he wants to steal steal your esteem whatever he can do to destroy you he's going to do it from the inside out he may not come and try to like hit you by a car but he will come from the end. He'll, he he wants to do an inside work. That's how people, you know, some people may end up committing suicide because they can go around throughout the whole day looking fine, looking okay. But next thing you know, they com commit suicide because the enemy is doing a work in their mind. It's a, it's a mind. It's the inward work that he does. Their mind and emotions. He does things to our soul to try to torment us. Make us feel like we're not enough. Make us feel like there's no point in us being alive. Make us feel like there's no point and purpose to our life. So to repel that spirit of poverty, give thanks for what you have. Give thanks for the people around you. Give thanks for, you know what I'm saying? Find things to give thanks, to rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Philippians, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say always rejoice, always rejoice in the Lord. Find things to be thankful for. My uh, testimony is on this uh, page earlier, uh, like maybe some months, a month or more, some time ago, some weeks, a month, maybe. Um, there was, I made a testimony about coming out of, sleeping out of my car into having a home, like a place to live and lay my head now having a whole job with income. Like God has blessed me abundantly, you all. And so this is just the beginning, you know, but, and this is just a part of the testimony, but um, it was not, you know, good to, it didn't feel good to not, it felt like I didn't have it. It, it didn't feel good, but I had to keep trusting God. I had to keep my hope. I couldn't let the enemy steal my hope. I law took some L's. I cried. I hated it. I was uncomfortable. I was hopeless sometimes, but I kept going. I pressed toward the mark. I didn't give up. I didn't just lay there and die. I had to fight back. I had to literally fight with the word of God. I had scriptures that I would read, the promises of God that I would read to myself and that I would quote. I was steadily, I, I didn't, you can't let your faith and your hope die. You can't let your spirit die. No matter what you go through, even if it's not like poverty or something, whatever it is, you can't let your spirit man die. You can't let yourself become hopeless. You can't let your joy become depleted. You can't let your faith come out of God and into even your own abilities or other people. You 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 have to keep your your spirit, your spiritual hygiene up. Check in with yourself. Like and be for real. How am I, what am I thinking? How am I thinking most of the day? How am I, like, it, it's crazy. We can get on autopilot. We can just get in such a routine and be so used to just going about our day that we don't take time to really check in and think, like, how am I thinking? 
Like I have to do it so many times. I have to do, I need to do it more, but I have to do it because I'll literally be, before I know, I'll be sitting there with a whole like attitude and I'll be frowned up and just looking like crazy because I've allowed those thoughts to settle in and get comfortable in my my mind. Under attack and not even aware. That's why the Bible says to keep your lamp burning. Like you have to be aware. You have to remain conscious. Don't let your mind take over you and take you into this, this sunken place. Glory to God. If you get there, the Lord can bring you up out of there. He's brought me up out of there many times. But anywho, speaking to resources, be thankful for the resources that you have. Practice Thanksgiving. When you receive money, you give thanks. Thank you, Lord. I got a check. I got income. Whatever. From whatever means. Thank you. Somebody tipped me. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Like, and you honor God with it by paying your tithes. 10% of whatever you earn should go to the house of God. Or uh, should go to God. And then you save or 10% this is what I was taught. You pay God 10%, you save 10%, uh, pay your bills, and you live off the rest. And so that breaks the spirit of poverty off of your life. <sighs> yeah. Um. So once again, to resources, look at what you have. Take assessment for what you have. Take assessment of what you have. You could have $5 in your bank account. There were times when I was living out my car where I would have like no gas, $5. I had my cell phone and I had my car that I was sleeping out of and I had internet on my phone. And I was like, I'm going to put this $5 of gas in here. And I would go and do Lyft and earn like $10 more, put that $10, you know, tithe, do, save, put that $10 back in my car in the gas tank, go make some more and just grow it like that until I got to where I was like, all right, cool. Now I, my, my gas tank is full and I can give me something to eat. Like you have to be resourceful. Don't, I, I could have just gotten there and been like, oh, I got $5, man. I'm going to just go buy me a, a meal and call it a night. But you got to, some got to shift in you from being a consumer and a person who don't have enough to a person who's like, I can make something happen with this. Like, it's a mentality. And I'm telling you, man, like, God, you may be a whole entrepreneur and don't even know it. Ah, another subject. So with your resources, you want to make sure you're, you're firstly um, giving thanks for whatever you receive. And it, whether it's a meal, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's somebody giving you a meal, somebody giving you, you getting money from your job, you getting advice about money, you getting new knowledge. Knowledge is also a weapon against the spirit of poverty. When you know about financial literacy, you know how to handle money, you know what to do with the money that you do have, you know how to manage your resources. Um, money is, uh, apart from money, your resource, a home, cars, possessions, or resources. Possessions are resources. They do not, if you are in the body of Christ, if you are a child of God, if you are um, under the lordship of Jesus Christ, then our home and cars don't even belong. Our life don't belong to us technically. It belongs to the Lord. So everything we have belongs to him. So we should never get to a place to where we say, my house, my car. I mean, you can. He's letting you, you know, manage it if you will but we have to honor the lord with our homes as well there may be a time you know be generous generosity breaks the spirit of poverty off of your life because when you're not being generous you're operating from that mentality i don't have enough to give i ain't got nothing i can't help nobody it's like i you're, you're identifying with lack and not enough But when you're generous, you're breaking that, that, that cycle. You're breaking that spirit of poverty off of you by saying, I have more than enough. Even if I have $5 and somebody who is homeless or something asks me for some money, I can give you $5 because I know that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's a promise. Like, you, you're you're op able to operate from that place, not because of what you currently have, but because of who God is. 
And so, I feel the Holy Ghost. So, your resources, maximize your resources, give thanks and take care of your resources. If God has blessed you with a house, an apartment, and you say God has blessed you with an apartment, but you want a house, take care of your apartment like it's a house already. And some of these houses be big and it takes a lot to keep these houses clean. So make sure you can manage and take care of what you already have before you ask for more. Because you don't want to be crushed and drained by a blessing that you can't because you can't manage it. But whatever you God blesses you with, take care of it. My father um taught me this so much growing up. He he had like he would when he would buy a new car or whatever he would buy, he takes so such, such a good care of it and it would get on my nerves. I'm like, do you really have to tell us not to eat in your car? Like, <laughs> is it really that serious? Like, can't we just eat these French fries? Um But he would like be kind of strict about his stuff and like um he would wash his car outside like every weekend and stuff. And I was just wondering, like, you know, is this him? I get it, I guess. But, you know, I see why now. He was just adamant about taking care of it. Even when he bought me or my parents bought me my first car, they were like, um, they were like, excuse me. My parents bought me my first car. Um, my dad would always ask me, like, you need to did you clean out your car? And when he would get in my car and see how filthy it was, he would be like, you need to clean out your car because it's it's not just about your car being clean and you showing off. It's about you taking care of what you're, the blessing that you have. Cause when you don't take care of it, when you don't value it, it's going to deteriorate faster. And I was kind of reckless. I ain't gonna lie. You know, he encouraged and just, I would run into stuff. I had a rough, rough patch, you know, coming out the, <laughs> But I didn't understand. I didn't value it for one because it was given to me, so I didn't have to work for it. So sometimes that's a whole word. Sometimes we don't value what we have because we didn't have to work for it. And sometimes God has to humble us by putting in, in us in a position to where we have to, you know, put our hand to the plow and work by the sweat of our brow to earn something so we can learn to value and appreciate stuff. That's another subject. But anyway, your resources. Take care of what you have. When I was living on my car, look, I had a trunk, had my cooler, I had my clothes and stuff in there, you know. And, um, you know, it was tight, but I vacuumed that mug out every chance I got. Um, heavy clean on the outside, kept the back organized, you know, even my dirty clothes, everything. I kept everything organized. Um, and I kept it clean. Like I did what I had to do. Um, and so in turn, not saying because I kept the car clean, but the Lord, I want, they want me living like that for, for that long. So he opened a door for me to have a place to live. And I'm just sharing the goodness of God. I'm not trying to boast about what I have. It's not about the house. Cause I was oddly, I was very content. I was getting to be content with the circumstances that I was living in. Um, of course, I always, to live in a house versus living in a car, of course, anyone would choose living in a home. But, <laughs> like, I had, I had gotten content. I was like, well, Lord, I had, you know, been making a living and been able to survive. And I was like, I'm good. Like, as long as I got you, I was going, I was spiritually, I was very strong, probably the strongest I had ever been because of how weak and broken I was. But like, it's when I got content and got to a place of gratitude for where I was, the guy was like, boom, pow, pow. All right, now I'm gonna open this door and get you somewhere to live. And I don't, I'm not saying the guy was trying to be cruel or ugly with me, but there's just certain lessons that we have to learn and certain losses that we have to take before we're able to learn a certain lesson. Like, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, I'm still fighting this thing off. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Oh, pay your bills on time. The pastor rich at first love church, Orlando, Florida, awesome man, a guy, he was talking yesterday about, um, paying your bills on time. That is literally seeing when we owe people money, uh, whether it's house note, car note, insurance, uh, anything, any loans we have, not paying people back, not paying loans off is sin. And so we need to do that. 
If you know you owe people money, do what you need to do. Put your get your affairs in order. Pay your debts off so that you can be free from that. Because if you always if you're living out of a place of debt, you're not financially free. And it's hard to operate from a place of abundance when you when you always owe people money. You know what I'm saying? I I know it's some stuff is just some debt can get outrageous and you're just like, what in the world have I got myself into? But it's possible to pay it off and to get back into a position of um of financial freedom. And what's his Dave Ramsey, he's a man, he he was uh he had gotten to a like I guess kinda hit a, a plateau financially. He was he ended up having a file for bankruptcy. Like he had a lot of debt. He and he had a house and he just ended up in a just terrible financial position because of all the debt he had and so his testimony is powerful. You can look him up and he has books and resources and stuff now to help people get out of debt and to become financially free. And so, yeah, um, that's that. Pay your bills. Don't get into any debt um, without getting advice from a financial advisor. Get a financial advisor or some, have somebody in your ear or watch, follow, listen to a podcast, listen to YouTubers who who know financial who have financial literacy don't do this stuff by yourself if you don't know what you're doing and i know a lot of us we weren't raised especially people of i you know i'm not gonna make the generalization but just some of us just weren't raised in households where um finances was like just talked about and explained it was just kind of like you know you living you're doing what you're doing we got food we got a house we good just live boom boom pow it wasn't just you know really uh, talked about much but anyway so if you just don't know you just don't know and there's no shame just get the resources and get the help that you need um and if you have found yourself in a pool of debt or just a financial bind you know once again talk to your creditors uh get the advice you need tell them your situation be honest be real like i ain't able to pay this like i can pay you a little bit i can pay this much this see if you can get a payment plan but don't just let it go into default take care of your business i'm man i'm telling y'all what i know if you have speeding tickets park you know whatever kind of bills from your car or whatever pay take care of that stuff so it does not it's going to affect you you can't just ignore it it's not going to go away and um once again, it takes humility. You might have to sit back. You might have to not do fun things for a certain amount. Or you might have to find free things to do for entertainment for some time. You may have to cut back on buying clothes. You may have to eat a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? You might have to have a caveman diet or do what you have to do. You may have to get a side hustle. Um, but whatever you do, don't just sit there and allow that spirit of poverty to uh, attack you and dominate and oppress you continue using your gifts continue operating in your purpose continue reading getting knowledge continue praying uh that's the most important thing you can do when it pertains as it pertains to anything pray 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 the bible says to pray about everything don't be be anxious for nothing but by but in everything by prayer and supplication make your request known to god pray to the father lord Look, this is where I'm at. You know, he knows everything before we even ask him anyway. But don't be get in the word. Learn what God says about money. Learn that God is your provider. And because you have a provider, you're not in this alone. Learn that He's He will never leave you or forsake you. You know what I'm saying? Learn that you're identify with align yourself with God's word. Align yourself with who you are in Christ. He says we are the lender and not a borrower. We are chosen. We are royal priesthood. When you know who you are in Christ, everything else in life stems from that. Finances, you know, relationships, every decision we make stems from our identity, who we believe we are. Once again, going back to value. When you understand biblical principles about money, about management, about being grateful for what you have, about honoring God with your will, with the first fruit of your increase. When you learn these things, excuse me, I got a little, but when you learn these things, um, giving, principles of giving, 
tithing, giving, investing, not letting your money. The Bible talks about investing, not letting your money just sit there and not grow. Put your money in, invest in something. Learn about investing so that your money can grow and work for you. You don't have to work for your money the rest of your life and be miserable and think like, oh my God, it's a mess. All a mentality, man, I'm telling you. But the Lord is still working on me. Uh, I just want to share what I have learned so far and share the revelations that God has given me. Um, God bless you all. Once again, my name is I'm Unique. Thank you so much for listening. If you've made it to the end of this video, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, I'm an artist. I'm a writer. I'm a poet. Uh, primarily, I'm a poet and a singer. So I sing and I write poetry, speak spoken word. And I have a poetry book out right now by the grace of God. It's called No Concealer. Who told you you were naked? It's very raw. It's very, um, it's insightful. It, it talks about um, just my journey with Christ, uh, how he's delivered me from just so many things, addiction, uh, depression, anxiety, um, toxic relationships, like so much that he's delivered me and brought me out of. And this poetry book literally just talks about that journey. So it's some real raw conversations between me and the Lord. So, you know, wherever you find yourself on your journey, um, it's just to kind of let people know or let people in on the fact that you know, it is a journey and, you know, pressing toward the mark and drawing closer to God is not just about being perfect and getting it all together. You have to talk with and walk with God through all that stuff. Anyway, that's what the poetry book is essentially uh, about. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I also have a single out. It's called Live and Not Die. It's available on all streaming platforms. And so I pray that, um, you know, you check that out. Glory to God. Uh, you can find it at the link in the description. Uh, go down, go in. It'll show you the books. Also have some merch. Some merchandise is in the works. I got a few things up already. But you know what I'm saying? You can go there and purchase. I think I have some sweatshirts. Maybe a coffee mug, a hat. Things like that. More things coming to the collection soon. Beautiful stuff that the Lord is doing, y'all. But yes, you can overcome the spirit of poverty. You can overcome the scarcity of the mentality. You can op we, you can live an abundant and lavish life. Um, and I know that I know that you can. That is your birthright. That is what God has created you. How God has created you to live. He did not create you to live to work your whole life and to pay bills. You know that is the conditioning that depending on your upbringing and education. That's that's how some of us were conditioned. But it's not how we were created by the master, by the creator of the universe to live. All right. So God bless you all. Take care. Until next time.